Hi, I'm Dennis Weiss. Welcome to our town here in Abilene, Kansas today at the Public Library and we have a guest, Todd Hokinson, who is the commander of Post 3279 of the Veterans of Foreign Wars. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Great to have you. Thank you. I enjoy being here. We, uh, I said before the camera came on, what are we going to talk about? And then as we started to, to share things, Gosh, uh, 25 <laughs> minutes is not going to be enough. No. What a wonderful, what a wonderful topic. Uh, so tell us a little bit about the history of the VFW, both the organization, the Abilene Post, and we'll start there. Well, the uh, actual VFW organization, the national headquarters actually started in 1899. Uh, and basically what it was is, is some individuals, some veterans from past wars were trying to get together just to be able to talk about their conflicts, about what had happened, the different things that they had seen that nobody else would know. Because when you're in a conflict, in a combat zone, and you come back, people that have never been in the military don't know what you're talking about. So they decided to work these little organizations together and finally came up with the Veterans of Foreign Wars and different titles, which started in 1899. And then over time, they started working and gotten bigger and bigger throughout the United States, figuring that there are different places in the United States that need help. All states have veterans. Mm -hmm. So eventually, uh, later on, they got uh, chartered, uh, national chartered, constitutional chartered in uh, 1936 by the uh, Congress. And so we've been going strong ever since. At the high point at one time, the VFW has had over 2.2 million veterans, part of the organization. Uh, now we're holding at about 1.7 million in the national mm -hmm. organization with over 6,600 uh, posts worldwide. So it's not just here, because there are some retirees and veterans that stayed in different countries, and so they do have posts there because they served in the, in the country. So that's gone along, and so this year we are celebrating 117 years of working uh, and helping the veterans throughout the world that need help, not only locally, uh, statewide but also nationally and so those are some things there. The Abilene Post is kind of unique in that it was started on the April 11th of 1935 uh, and has been going, going ever since. Over time they've done a lot of things, uh, different commanders. Uh, I think uh, I'm about number 43 okay. for commanders in the post uh, and we work together as a team to help our community and a lot of things have gone on. Well, over the past few years, things have died out and the, the, the VFW has slowly started dying because there's lack of membership and lack of uh, participation. But uh, when I came and I started joining the, this post, I transferred out of Germany. That's where I originally started, was in 1995 with the VFW in Kitzigan, Germany. And then I moved here and moved around and then was assigned here to Fort Riley. And so I thought, well, let me get back involved with the VFW. So. 2005, after I got done with my conflict in Iraq, I got started with the VFW here. And at that time, uh, Mike Rowley was the commander. And uh, so I just be participated, was a member, and we were going through meetings and meeting every once a month. And I thought that was the norm. Maybe every once in a while, we'd have a ceremony that we'd be a part of. Uh, and then uh, I had to go back to combat. Then I came back, got a little bit more involved. Mike Rowley had stepped out. We had. Uh, uh, the next person was uh, Johnny Kinder, was the next commander, and then after him was uh, Gary Vincent. Uh, Gary Vincent has recently passed away. Uh, Johnny Kinder is still around, and he currently is the senior vice commander for uh, working with me and, and helping me. And then uh, 2013, we were at a meeting, and I thought it was the norm that one man handled both organizations, the VFW and the American Legion. Well, I found out it's not. It should be different people. And it was putting too much pressure on Gary Vincent, so I opened my mouth and... <laughs> that's how most it, volunteer jobs That's right. Are <laughs> so here I am, and uh, 2013 was a learning experience for me and us as a post. Um, and we learned a lot, and there were some things that we weren't doing as a post, so I started learning all I could mm -hmm. and started making mention at our post meetings that we need to do this. We need to get involved with our community. So that was 2013, 14 year. Uh, so we did just attended meetings, started working on turning forms in properly and all of that. 2014, 2015 year, we worked uh, and started learning. We got a late start that year. 
Uh, we started working to try to make all state, and I'll explain that a little later what that means. Um, but we were trying to become an all state and trying to do what we can. Well, when I started in 2013, the membership for the post was only at 68 members, and that's active members. They mm -hmm. paid their due life membership. Um, and so I said, guys, we've got to go out and we've got to recruit. We've got to talk to people. So we started working together as a team. Uh, and in that year of 2014, 2015, we uh, went from 68 to 131. Uh, and people started watching and started asking questions when I would show up to different meetings. Sure. What are you doing? Uh, we're recruiting. Well, we're talking to people, we're pulling our old rosters out, seeing if people are still around, and, and that's what we're doing. Good. Well, we missed it by one item to make all state, so we said, well, we're not going to let that happen again. So this last year, with the help of all the members, we sat down and diversed a plan on what we needed to do to get out into the community more, to make sure that we were doing all of our community projects, to take care of the high school students, the junior high students with scholarships that we have, such as the Patriot Pin. It's a 350 word contest that a junior high student from sixth, seventh, or eighth grade uh, can write a 350 word essay on the topic that's been designated by the national headquarters and then turn it into the local VFW. If there are the winners, then like here in Abilene, we give our first place winners $150. Um, and then for the high school students, it's called a voice of democracy. They have an opportunity to make a three to five minute speech and record that speech and then turn it into the local VFW on a topic that national headquarters has come up with and then turn it in. And then our winners here in Abilene, those high school students get $250 from us. And then they get sent forward to the next level, which would be a district level. If they win at the district, they go on to the state. At each level, those individuals, both in the Patriot Pen and the Voice of Democracy, they turn around and earn money. If they go all the way to the national, they have an opportunity to earn anywhere from $1,000 all the way up to a $30,000 skip scholarship That's from terrific. VFW. Well, you know, Todd um, grew up in a very small town in Colorado, and the VFW for us were, were the dedicated group of men who had served, who uh, invested their time and money mm -hmm. into buying an ambulance, outfitting it, and anytime somebody needed to go 39 miles to the hospital, <laughs> uh, Troy Young Memorial VFW carried us there. Cool. And uh, cool is right. I mean, so my first thought of a VFW is service mm -hmm. because that was my first contact with right. them. Many people probably, their first thought of VFW is more like a club. Yeah. where people go hang out, play bingo, whatever. That is not the case in Abilene, Kansas. Nope. It's probably not the case in most places, but it's not the case here. You're, you're truly a service organization, first to the veterans, yes. by providing companionship, by providing outreach, by checking on people in their homes if they need it, helping with folk funneling them to healthcare, whatever the yes. process is, that's what you do. Yep. And I, it's, it's, it's such a great, chance for you to sit here on camera and, and to tell people what you can do for their neighbor. And right. so take a shot at it. Tell people what is available in Abilene and how they can help you. Um, some of the things that are available here in Abilene is first they can contact us directly. We do have a phone number to uh, our post, uh, which is the 785-260-9043. Um, that's forwarded directly to me. Mm -hmm. um, and then I can start working with those individuals. Uh, we have the capabilities of helping veterans maybe if they need medical equipment. We supply, we have a good supply of medical equipment that is free mm -hmm. for use to sign out from us, such as crutches, such as wheelchairs, uh, such as walkers. Uh, we also have uh, uh, shower seats, mm -hmm. potty seats. So we have sure. all the medical equipment available for those individuals that need it. And again, it goes back, the veterans are first, then their families, and then anybody else in the community uh, that needs assistance and needs those items that can't afford them, that's what we're here for. Um, and then is when it comes down to if a veteran is having difficulties with his claim, uh, I do have a service officer that will assist them or we can get them oh, to right. Salina or we can recommend where to go and we have telephone numbers available to those service officers. Uh, to be able to go get their claims helped with because sometimes they're not understanding or the claims people don't understand 
what they're trying to do, but since we work with them, we do that. Uh, we also provide uh, counseling if there's a, a person that needs a chaplain. I do have a chaplain, uh, Bob Glover, he's mm -hmm. our chaplain, and uh, he's available to assist and make calls and, and all of that. So we do work as a team and all of that, and initial call comes in. Our num name and numbers are also posted outside of our post there. Uh, if they need any more assistance that we're there. We just got done helping a National Guard soldier in the community that was having some financial difficulties. Yesterday we had the opportunity to help pay her water bill and help pay her uh, uh, electric bill so that she could keep her lights going, but because of finances and stuff, we have that based on a case-by-case -case basis. Well, Todd, we're sitting in the Abilene Public Library in the Malat Room upstairs, and you pointed to the south because that's where your post is, right yes. over there on yep. the street. So if people are looking for where you are, all they have to do is go on the east side of the Public Library, the city building, and go a half a block, and there you are. So that 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 is a visual reminder of who right. you are and what you do. But you know, uh, all VFWs, uh, really the strength of the organization are the people. Right. Uh, people who are serving in office, and the membership, and the bonds between that group of veterans. It, it shouldn't be a surprise to anybody, but I've been doing these long enough to know that sometimes the news passes people and, right. and it doesn't stick everywhere. But uh, veterans coming uh, home have, have faced a lot of challenges in modern yep. America. And now, may I say, they've always faced a lot of challenges. Oh, yeah. The veterans coming home in 1899 faced a few as well. Yep. It's never been any different. But I think as citizens, I think it's a chance for you and I to simply express our support for taking care of those who took care of us yep. and uh, gave us the freedom to have all the things we have here. There's a lot of need in the VA system, and uh, you offer services that help people m work their way through that with service officers, but maybe more than anything else, you're Todd Hokinson, you live in Abilene, Kansas, you're willing to sit down in a chair, talk, mm -hmm. listen, and do what you can. Yep, and that sometimes is all that a person wants, is somebody just to listen to them. Um, I enjoy going to some of the meetings and being there early, prior to our meetings, which is the first Tuesday of each month at seven o'clock. And I like going there because sometimes it's nice to ask questions from the guys that have been in combat before you. Mm -hmm. um, I have a lot of Vietnam veterans. Um, I do have a few Korean veterans. Um, mm -hmm. Right now I'm one of the youngest ones in the post and so I'm an Iraqi veteran. But we have all this, everything in common but it's nice to listen to their stories because sometimes that's all they want to do. Yeah. And sometimes their stories are just fascinating compared to some of the stories I might have. But all in all, it's a therapy to help mm -hmm. heal them, help to be able to talk to somebody that knows and has been there in the same shoes. All human beings uh, seek to uh, be understood mm -hmm. and uh, n the likelihood of someone understanding is directly related to how many shared circumstances yes. you have. Uh, I think it's incredibly important to know that we have a healthy VFW organization in Abilene, Kansas. Uh, you folks meet regularly, you have, a, you have a good group of people, and you're there to help each other. Um, I always try to ask the people behind the lens or give the people out there an action item. So mm -hmm. how can the people who aren't involved in the VFW help you reach your goals of helping veterans? Uh, one of the action ways, or a couple of the action ways is one, if they know of a veteran in the community, that is like their neighbor. And the neighbor is struggling, whether they're elderly, whether they're medically having problems, mm -hmm. and they feel that, that we could help them out, all they gotta do is call us, and we'll be able to see how we can help them. If not, we have different avenues that we can assist, but that's what one of the avenues. The other avenue is, is if they wanna make, to help our posts, to maintain things, we've got different projects going on, and donations are always accepted. Um, they can send it to the 317 North Spruce Street or they can get in contact with us via telephone and I can tell them they can send it to my house, but we'll make sure that their donations, are, which are, are tax deductible, can go there because we're a 501C19. So it's a little bit different, but if they do that, and we use that money, those donations, we're looking at for our scholarship, continue our scholarship fund for the students and the people here in our community. 
but we're also looking at trying to remodel our post and get it more revived and updated. Um, and uh, we've done that lately. We had a uh, gentleman in the community that willed some money to us. We ended up remodeling our kitchen. Terrific. We got uh, uh, ADA certified bathroom. Our doors are ADA certified, our front doors. That's great. So those are some ways that they can help us. And uh, if they've got young veterans, young couple of veterans, mm -hmm. we'd like to help them. Um, we do have an auxiliary that's just recently started back up. They have 22 members, but they're always looking. And it's not just ladies. Now it is a call just a VFW auxiliary. That's family members. Yes, family members. Mm -hmm. So if the veteran, the combat veteran is a female, then her husband or spouse can be a part of the auxiliary and continue sure. to give back. I think that's, that's terrific that people hear that. Um, putting a support group together mm -hmm. around family is probably the best way. Uh, so you wouldn't want to be exclusionary yep. at VFW. Well, the, I remember when it used to be the ladies auxiliary. Right. I remember yep. that term. So it's good to know that, that mm -hmm. it's auxiliary and that pe uh, people who are around that veteran are welcome to come be part of the and organization. And the nice thing about it, it's even open to children of the veterans mm -hmm. from the age current, current age is 16 and older. Okay. But uh, the national convention that's getting ready to happen this weekend, the auxiliary is getting ready to possibly vote to move that down to 14 year olds okay. so they can still be a part of something, mm -hmm. still support their spouse or their combat veteran and still give back into the community because of what the community has been doing and stuff and it's just another way to support and work together as a team. I consider it a privilege, um, but I've had a privilege of, of knowing a lot of combat veterans from my father mm -hmm. and his brothers World War II on, um, but I've never met a single combat veteran that didn't have a need to talk. Yep. Um, that doesn't mean a gushing well of talk, it means a need right. to talk and they're not always comfortable with talking to just anybody right. about combat. Uh, I think it's an important thing for people to hear. Uh, we have a lot of people who are retiring here at 40 mm -hmm. something out of the right. military who have been on four or five or six combat deployments and uh, combat is combat. Yep. It doesn't matter the generation, it's still combat. Uh, those needs are there, and you, when you when you run into that guy with this with the slick haircut that just moved to Abilene, uh, he may be having the same issues as the World War II generation mm -hmm. did. Uh, and if, uh, he's your neighbor, you should mention to him the VFW is alive and well in Abilene, Kansas, and we'd love to have him come down. Yep, we got a lot of things going on also in the next couple of months that people might be interested in knowing. Uh, my wife and I are getting ready to leave uh, this afternoon. We're going, this is our very first VFW convention in Charlotte, North Carolina. Um, and I'm going there because our post uh, made some requirements that I had talked about earlier become all state. Well, the state of Kansas sets up standards and we okay. have to fulfill those standards. And yes, it is a competition, but it's also another way to remind the organization, the VFWs in each post in each city to get out and get in the community. So mm -hmm. we have to do a lot of community yeah. things and turn those in. It's, it's, a, it's a contest, but simply is a reflection of yes. what you do or don't do yes. in your daily walk as a and, uh, commander. So those are, those are things that we've done and we met all the requirements, exceeded and went above beyond. I brought my leadership as a first sergeant uh, from the military police. <laughs> I brought that in. I like competition, so okay, competition is yeah. on. Well, we work together as a That's, team. Yeah. And because of that, our team got recognized this last June by the state of Kansas as becoming an all-state. Well, and because terrific. we excelled and exceeded the standards, we ended up getting recognized as Captain All-State Post, which then turned us and put us in the running for an All-American. Okay. The national, head co national commander in chief put out his standards, which we had to be in the top 35 in our division based on our membership. And we worked real hard and we stayed up into the top five. And actually we finished the year off, which starts the 1st of July to 30 June. So this past June, we finished number four in our division. Um, and we worked together and did our membership. So we brought our membership up from 2014-15 from 131 to 212 members now as of this 
last June and stuff. And we're going to continue to That's work. terrific. Looking for younger people to come in and help take some of the office positions, bring their ideas about, sure. about that. But those are some things. And so I'm going to the convention with my wife and bring back some good news, hopefully. We've got some things that are going on and changing. That's what I'm bringing back. Um, in August, we've got a lot of going on. Uh, not only we've got state, conven state midsummer convention in Russell, uh, that's where we're having it. Then uh, the fourth district, which Abilene falls into, uh, we have our district meeting in August also. And then on the 27th of August, which is the last Saturday of the month, at Tuttle Creek, the fourth district, which I fall into because I've been elected as a new commander in that district, um, but we have a Warrior Transition Battalion picnic to honor those individuals that have been hurt and that are still stationed at Fort Riley trying to recover. Sure. And we've got all sorts of activities for their families, kids, the veterans themselves with their capability and limitations. We got it opened up and that's an all day event. Wow, that's terrific, Todd. I know we're, we're either out of time or awfully close to it. So I'm gonna have you send me a graphic that we can put up on channel two describing that event. Sure. That uh, sounds terrific. I, I can't thank you enough for taking your time to come in. Thank you for your service both in uniform and in this uniform You're helping uh, veterans. Uh, great duty, great I, duty. I enjoy it and, and that's what I'm looking forward to is continue to serve no matter what capacity I'm in, whether I'm still was out on active duty, but now I'm going to keep serving out here because there's people that need to be taken care of. Well done. Well done. Thanks for visiting with us on camera today. Folks, w we so appreciate you watching. Uh, if you see Todd Hokinson on the street, you might say thanks for your service at the VFW uh, post 3279 right here in Abilene, Kansas. Thank you for your time today. I'm Dennis Weiss for Eagle Communications. This is Todd Hokinson. You have a great day.